Did you know that diagrams play a very important role in economics? Today I'm going to walk you through five simple steps that could be implemented to give better diagrams in your economics exams. Hi, my name is Jagdeep and I'm the founder of Economica and I am on a mission to help 1 million students attain good grades in economics. Along with that, be able to implement the principles of economics in their day-to-day decision makings. Well, let's get started with the five steps. The first step here is to ensure the relationship that these diagrams are trying to establish between the two variables that we were putting on the x and the y axis in the diagram. If we know the relationship between these two variables, putting the diagram, explaining it would be a very easy task for you all. Let's say for example, if we are talking about say demand. So the law of demand states other things being equal as the price rises, demand falls and as the price falls, demand rises. So we are able to understand here that price and the quantity demanded have an inverse relationship. They vary inversely with each other. So if this concept is clear in your head, putting the diagram in your exam would not be an issue for you. Second important thing is many a times people interchange the labels for the x-axis, the x-axis and the y-axis. So when we draw the diagram for the law of demand, I'm going to continue with the same uh, example. So in law of demand, the y-axis would measure price, x-axis would measure quantity demanded. So if we get these two axes correctly, plotting the diagram would become very, very easy and it would never go wrong. Third important thing, many students, they just don't label the diagram. It is utterly important for you all to label the diagrams. Put what is there on the y-axis, put what is there on the x-axis. What is the curve? How is it sloping? What is it telling? What is the name of that curve? Many a times they, the students, they have y-axis, they have x-axis, the curve is simply standing there with no name to it. So as an examiner, I would not know what you are trying to tell me. You need to label the diagrams really well. Without labels, it really stands no value there. Fourth important step, we don't give headings to our diagrams. We, when, even if the question is absolutely clear, say the question says state the law of demand. So we know that it is go you are going to put law of demand, but how long will it take you to put law of demand or demand as the heading for that particular diagram? It, it won't take much time. Instead, it will give more clear presentation for your diagram. So try doing that. Give the headings to those diagrams. Fifth important step is explanation. You just put the diagram, don't explain it. Again, it's useless. It, it serves no purpose there. So you need to explain the diagram. You need to tell what is there in the diagram, what is there on the x-axis, what is there on the y-axis, how is the curve moving in the diagram, what kind of relationship is established between the x, uh, between the y-axis and the x-axis. So try and do that. But trust me, explanation cannot come overnight. You need to practice a lot because what I am trying to tell you is not memorize, understand and then write and understanding and writing needs practice. Draw a lot of diagrams, practice all the diagrams. You have umpteen number of diagrams in law of demand, elasticities of demand, law of supply, elasticities of supply. In certain uh, boards, you have de uh, uh, demand diagrams for the different market structures, Price. mechanisms. So try and draw those diagrams and implement the, the, the explanation of it in your own words it will work wonders. You will never ever go wrong in your diagrams. Keeping all these things in mind, go ahead and start practicing. Until then, I meet you in your next video with some other concept and some other topic. Bye now. Cheers.